covering her in the church and not covering her. Amen. Hello. Sometimes people say it is written in the Bible. Sometimes people say, show me where it is written. Not everything is written. Not everything is will be written. Because there are some things that is true that you will not find in the Bible. But the Spirit of God in you will bear you the witness. That is why the first way to overcome the destruction of end time is to know the Bible yourself. We, we are now the temple. So even this time, the Lord said, time is coming, that you will no longer be going around based with this book anywhere you go. Yeah? But what is written in this word now will be transferred where? In your heart. And the, that heart is the highest thing. Because that one, you cannot be deceived. Somebody say amen. amen. So now, Ezekiel 36, 36 verse 26. Ezekiel 36, 26. Uh -huh. God bless you. A new heart also will I give you. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit. And a new spirit. Will I put within you? And I will take away this holy heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a, a heart of flesh. Amen. So God is now making us understand. He is talking about the investment of the Holy Spirit in our heart. Amen. That is, that is the investment of what? Of the Holy Spirit in our heart. The investment of the Holy Spirit in our heart is what God is talking about. And the Bible makes us to understand, I will give you a new heart. And the new spirit will I give you. So now, what am I talking about now? That if you say that I must only do what is written in the Bible, sometimes you will sin against God. Because some things you should do, you may not find it written in the Bible. If you say that anything I see in the Bible, I must do it. Sometimes Satan will still use the Bible to deceive you. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Do you know that Bible contains righteousness and unrighteousness? Do you know that? Do you know that Bible contains righteousness and what? Unrighteousness. That is a righteous act and unrighteous act. And the Lord made everything to be there together. So that when we go there, we can know the righteousness out of unrighteousness. The unrighteousness Bible carry make us to know what to avoid. And the righteousness that the same Bible carry make us to know what we do after. A man that said that everything I see in the Bible, I must do it, that man will worship devil. Because in the Bible, you saw David sleeping with another man's wife. And after sleeping with another man's wife, the Lord called him, you are a man after my own heart. Does it mean that when I sleep with another man's wife, now I become a man after God's own heart? Eh? What, what, what made David, after committing that sin, the Lord said, you are a man after my own heart, was because of the inner man of David, the heart of David towards God that man cannot see. So David had the heart of repentance. He had a heart that he admit his fault. He had that kind of heart. And the Lord said, you are a man after my own heart. Amen? And uh, you see, the same Bible, you see Solomon married 700 wives. Can we go ahead and marry some of their wives? After getting seven hundred wives, he said it's not okay. He went ahead and had three hundred dear friend added it. That is one thousand. Even a man on that course will not have one thousand women. Man on that course will not have what? One thousand women around him. What is he need to do? Are you a person? Even though he has a person, is he every day you need a person? Amen. Which I believe that Solomon will not know all his wives. I know. Maybe you give them number, number one, number 30. You know what you can say? What is your number? Is your number 82? The other one, number 500. I believe that you will know that by number. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So now, can we go and say because Bible said it, and the Lord blessed Solomon, let's go and marry some other wives. Are you following me? Now, and again, I had a pastor on television saying that polygamy was not a sin. I had a pastor that said that in the Bible, so so does a marry two wives, so so does a marry four wives, so so does a marry three wives. Have you want that kind of message? 
Okay, you are not one that Okay, I'm not that kind of person. Okay? So, and it's like that pastor also have, like, is it, is it three wives? The pastor married three wives. He, he has branches, different parts of nations. Not only in Nigeria, different parts of nations. And he has many members. Amen? Remember that she, he was doing what he saw in the Bible. Am I right? So he said in the Bible, the baby is married. In the Bible, this one married. In the Bible, this one married. So he now discovered that Satan had used the same Bible to do what? To deceive him. There was a man who was in seminary school called John Dewey. Once a man of God, he was deceived. Amen. So now, the Lord said, you don't need anybody to teach you anymore. The Lord saw all the confusion that will be in this end time. And the Lord said, I'm going to make investment in your heart. Nobody will teach you anymore. But I, the Lord, will do what? Will teach you. God is the one to teach us. God is the one to guide us. God is the one to direct us. God is the one to lead us. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. So now, based on this, now, let's come. Let's come to the truth of the gospel. The Bible said that we should look on to who? Jesus. We should look on to Jesus, the author, and the what? So any preacher that is ministering, that his preaching is not like the preaching of Jesus, is nonsense. And when we look at Jesus, ministry of Jesus, you discover that Jesus don't have time in most of these things that people are teaching in righteousness. Jesus don't have time for that. Even Jesus did not teach those things because it's not part of the assignment. Jesus never one day said, don't wear trousers. He never one day said, don't wear nika, don't wear jeans, don't wear clothes. Those things are nonsense. Because there is the work of the Holy Spirit in the heart of a man. That when Holy Ghost is in you, there are many things he will teach you. You don't need anybody to teach you. So anybody that has Holy Spirit, sometimes, what you may not call sin, he may call it sin. That he will try to put on this hair tie. He say, I don't need this type of hair tie. Don't wear it again. So you will not say, ah, but hair tie, put this particular one, this particular one, he will condemn it. So, but you can go and wear the other one, he will not condemn it. Amen? And also, there is a difference between a vessel. Sometimes when God wants to use a man, he will tell that person, don't dab your hair. That is a personal assignment with that person. Because of what God wants to use that man to achieve on earth. And that man cannot come on the pulpit and say, nobody will dab his hair. God can tell a man, God can say, okay, I don't want you to be wearing earrings, necklace, moonbeam, because what God wants to use that woman to do, those things will bring distraction. What did I say? Distraction. Because there is something they call consecration. Consecration is separating yourself. So there are many things God will separate you from, so that it will not destroy the assignment He has for you. So, and that woman cannot mount on the altar and say, nobody will be putting with God in this church. Nobody will be wearing her tie here. The Lord condemned it. No, God did not condemn it. That is an instruction God gives to you personally. Hello? You understand what I mean? That is the instruction God gives to you personally. But we must understand, we will not see the cause of this. I mean, People are naked. When a lady wear panty, anything is supposed to wear inside and cover it with normal thing. You don't supposed to wear it outside. You don't need to see it in the Bible. How will Bible write tight in the Bible? Was there tight in that? That time. Yeah? How will God come? So I had somebody. Somebody was preaching and said that homosexuality is not a sin. Because it's not in the Bible. He used Bible to prove it. He used Bible to prove that it's not a sin. So now, he used Bible to prove that homosexuality is not a, a sin. So you are free. So now we must be very, very careful. There are some, there are some ministry, they call it holiness ministry. 
But when you check what they are doing there and compare it to God's word, you will discover it is a certain ministry. It's not a holiness ministry. We must understand that. Amen? Amen. What kind of holiness are you that your neighbor cannot say good thing about you? What kind of holiness is that? What kind of holiness that you did not value any other person except people that are going to your church? What kind of holiness is that? So now, that is not holiness. Hallelujah. Amen. You remember Jesus? Jesus ate with Pharisees. Jesus ate with, uh, you remember that time Jesus was going to the house of Zacchaeus? They said, ah, if Jesus did not know this one, the worst sinner. Ah, he's quite himself a prophet. He's supposed to know this one is a sinner. If Jesus was present on earth, like physically, eh? you know I clear the people. Eh? I clear the people with his friends. Go and check the scripture very well. Jesus never made friends with religious leaders. Go and check it in the Bible. Religious leaders are the worst problem in the kingdom of God. They are, in fact, they are the ones that persecute Jesus. Said. Who are the people Jesus made friends with? Sinners, unbelievers, uh, idol worshippers. Uh, uh, um, you know, those kind of people that we, we neglect these days. We don't want to associate with them. That is why you see a pastor going somewhere. You see we have people that are drinking beer, drinking style, drinking uh, all this uh, whole drink. The pastor will say you people are sinners. They are committing sin. Pastor don't like to associate with them. Yeah. I was going somewhere the other day. I saw God married men, they gathered, they were drinking. When I came there, they thought that I will scold on them, they thought that I will I will harass them. No, I will not harass them because if Jesus comes there, Jesus will not harass them. Hallelujah. I carry seat, I sit down. They were surprised to see a pastor sitting down. You know, some people, people say, Ah, oh, where people are passing, they will say, You will have missed it already, they will say. You don't need to know what they will say. I sat down. You can preach Jesus today, they will listen to you. you, you, you we, should, we should understand what Christianity is all about. So now, in terms of wearing trousers and uh, uh, women shall not wear that what pertains to a man, and a man shall not wear what pertains to a woman. Amen. Amen. You do not understand that scripture. The, when you go to Bible, there is a difference. When you read Bible with Greek language, you know, Greek language, you understand by the modern English translation. Amen? Amen? Somebody here, are you following? Yes, sir. So, everybody, we are presenting scripture. Because there is no need that at the end of our life, we discover that we will mess up. When you look at Deuteronomy 20, 22 verse 5, right? It said that a woman should not put on that which pertains to a man. A man should not put on that which pertains to a woman, that whosoever that does it is committing abomination unto God. What is that thing that pertains to a man? Is it a trouser? Is it a trouser that pertains to a man? No. What is that that pertains to a woman? Is it skirts? No. So now we must understand. When you go to the Bible, you see man. There is a difference between man and Adam. They are not the same. Hello? Hi. There is a difference between what? Man and Adam. When you see Greek Hebrew, if you are reading with a Hebrew Bible, there are some places God will say man. There are some places God will say Adam. They are not the same. Man is the gender. Man, woman. All of them are Adam. Huh? Now, but that book of Deuteronomy 22, if you find it in the original translation, that book did not put man in there at all, at all. No man in there. Because if that book put man in there, he's talking about somebody like me. Huh? If that book put woman in there, he's talking about somebody like you. But that particular place, no man at all, at all. Look at the meaning of that particular place. I advise you today, go and find Hebrew Bible. So that you understand it. Look at what I will say here. Soldiers should not put on that which pertains to a woman. 
and the woman should not put under his pertinent to what? Soldier. What do I say? Soldiers should not put on that garment that pertains to a woman. And women do not put on that garment that pertains to a soldier. That is whoever that doing this is an abomination unto the Lord. I'm going to explain it today. Somebody say amen. Yeah. On the last day, not what a pastor said, God will use to judge. It is the written word of God. I don't care to know any pastor that preach anything. I don't care to know. I don't care to know what they call righteousness and holiness. I don't care to know. But you can never be holier than the word of God. You can never be more righteous than God's word. Because one thing, as I start preaching the gospel, one thing I fear most, I fear one thing most, so that I will not preach something contrary to what is written. Because Bible says, do not add, and do not do what? He said, when you add, the Lord shall add the, all the plagues written in the Bible to you. And when you remove, the Lord shall remove your name from the book of life. That is to tell you, as you see the Bible like that, do it. Preach it. Don't try to make it more better. You cannot make the word of God more better. It is the word of God that will make you more better. So sometimes people remove the add. No, I will not do that. Praise God. What did I say that he will say? Soldier, do not wear that garment that belongs to a man, a woman. And women, do not wear the garment that belongs to what? A soldier. Because whosoever that wear that is an abomination unto God. You know that when God wants to talk to you, God will not use the Yoruba language to talk to you. Why? You are not understanding Yoruba. Hello? You know when God wants to talk to you, God will not use um, uh, any good language to talk to you. You are evil, are they? You cannot understand the Nubu. God can never use it to talk to you. When God wants to talk to you, what will He use? The one you understand. You remember the time Jesus wanted to teach the spiritual thing about the kingdom of God to his disciples. He carried them to a particular building where they are building a house. Physically. They were building houses there. Building blocks there. Jesus said to them, time is coming when there will be no one block laid upon another. Eh? Because there is somewhere that we are learning that block. Jesus said, the time is coming, there will be no one block laid upon another this building. So they learn you that physical thing they saw to understand what the spiritual reality is or was. You understand it? So now they now understand what the spiritual reality is through the physical thing they saw. And sometimes God will use your tradition to talk to you. God can never use uh Indian tradition to talk to you. You don't understand Indian. God will never use Yoruba culture to talk to you as an evil man. Because you never understand the culture of Yoruba. Unless if you have understanding of the, that, God can use it. You understand what I mean? So now I want to teach us now. Why did God talk to them? Moses was a national prophet. Moses was not just a utter stupid old prophet. Satan has limited the Christian of this end time on the pulpit. You see this pulpit? It's good, but if you end up here, Satan has limited you. Satan has limited the uh, uh, poor apostle, prophet of this end time. On what? On what? On pulpit. Moses was not any pulpit prophet. And you will not remain a pulpit prophet in Jesus' name. Moses was a national prophet. Moses can gather presidents, uh, ministers, uh, rep, soldiers, and give them advice, and they obey the word of God. This is what God is looking for. Where is the prophet in Nigeria that can come in the whole governors of Nigeria appear? The whole house of rep appear and say, God said the Lord, do like this, do like this, and all of them, they begin to do like that. That is what God wants. So that day, Moses called all the soldiers in Israel. And Moses gathered them. 
And when he was giving that instruction personally on soldiers, and in Israel, woman cannot be a soldier. Okay, now, woman cannot be a soldier. That is the tradition, that is the culture of Israel. It's only man that will be a soldier. And the man that is not above 20 years, there not be. So now, Moses was talking to them and said, Soldiers, you are not permitted to wear women clothes. If you do that, it's an abomination unto the Lord. And women, you are not permitted to wear what? Soldiers clothes. Why? Women are not permitted to go to war. And uh, soldiers, there can be a war at any time. So, 24 hours, they are on their war clothes. That's their war garment. You know, when you want to go to war, you will wear a helmet to cover your head, uh, do this and do uh, that was how soldiers dressed. Even when they are sleeping, they are on their clothes. And then they can come out, they will just blow so. And then they will just jump out of the bed. And they uh, they go for war immediately. So they are always ready. Do you know why Jesus said you must be ready? Huh? Because you don't know the hour. He's using the, 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 the mentality of his, he's talking to us as his soldiers. And he said to us, we are soldiers of cross. Eh? So you must be ready. So now, imagine when a, a soldier now we are normal clothes like a woman. He has, that he has nothing to do with skirt and trouser. He has nothing to do with But you must understand that women are wearing trousers that show their private part. That is the satanic agent. Women are wearing some nonsense thing that tie them, tie their bum bum, tie, tie everywhere. You are, you are, why is you this reason? You know, now these days are not wearing panties. Very soon, companies that are producing panties will close. Maybe they will be producing panties for children. Because children are the ones that are wearing panties now. Now, we are talking about this. So, we may so that must be ready 24 hours. So, for that reason, they are not permitted to wear ordinary clothes. And the lady, women that, are, that cannot go to war is not permitted to wear on soldier garment as a. It's an abomination unto the Lord. Amen. It has nothing to do with what? Trouser. Number two, to prove it. Bible says that in the month of two or three. Bible says that anything you did not see two to three places cannot be a doctrine. Do you know what Jesus said? In the month of two or three, witness, the matter will be seen. Do you know that? But even in a physical law court, you will present like two or three witnesses. You cannot present one witness. Even in a law court. Talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Why? To make sure that that thing you are saying is authentic, is, is not lie. You remember the time I had when they wanted to collect the, the land of this, uh, marriage. They presented two false witnesses. Two false witnesses. And this one came and said, I was there when uh, Nabo said it. Another person came and I was there when Nabo said it. So, two witnesses before they stole Nabo to death. Amen? So now, is there any other place in the Bible you see women don't put on that pattern to a man? Man don't put on that pattern to a woman. Who shall rather do it is an abomination unto the Lord. Is there any other verse in the scripture? Is there any other verse again, both in the Old Testament and New Testament, is there any other verse as apart from Deuteronomy? Eh? So it can never be a doctrine. Hello? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Bible said that anything that you did not see written in the scripture, two to three places, is not, it, it, it is not that particular thing in you. So find the meaning of that. Everything you see in the Bible, sometimes you see more than three, four, five, six, eight places. Uh -huh. But this one is not, is not a doctrine. So when church said, don't wear trousers, don't wear skirts, don't wear this, don't wear... Do you know that when Jesus came in the world, Jesus was wearing gown? So Jesus will go to hell. Huh? So Jesus will go to hell now. Because he put on that, that pertains to 